G'day guys, welcome back. It's acrylic pouring day, yay. <laughs> Look at all my colours. I'm going to do something that I haven't done for a while. I'm going to do a ribbon pour uh, up my canvas like this. So this is a 30 by 60 centimetre, 12 by 24 inch. I've put tape on the sides, just masking tape. I fold it, I'll do a little bit. I fold it into like into thirds like that so that I've got half sticky and half not sticky. And then the sticky side, I just, um, you know, stick onto the side of the canvas like that. And uh, it stops my paint falling off the edges. So same thing I do when I do with my um, multiple ring pours. So let's get started. I've been mixing paint for what feels like hours. So I wanted to get some really pretty colors. I was inspired, uh, these colors, totally by um, Madison Curran. Hi, Maddie, if you're watching. <laughs> she did a beautiful pour. Put it up on my Facebook group, Pouring Your Heart Out. And um, yeah, I love the colors. They, I think they're sort of a combination between these two that I did. I don't know if I've shown you both of these. This was my, when I was doing my sort of blues and browns and sort of greens, natural kind of a look. So I'm going sort of between these two, but no silicone oil today, okay? Just going to try for a ribbon pour. When I started pouring, uh, like four years ago, I did a lot of um, ribbon pours. I did heaps, but I put silicone oil in them, so I got a really um, interesting look. You have to check out some of my older videos. Now I'm using all the Montmartre paints today and most of them have been mixed like different colours to make different colours. Um, pouring medium is my glue and water. It is... Um, just concentrating here. 60% <laughs> glue and 40% water and then I've mixed that one to one I'm just trying to think what I'm going to do here I'm just going to do a dirty pour I'm not layering my colors I'm actually just going to do a dirty pour because I want the colors to blend I don't want to see harsh stripes so I've got two whites and then I've got like a mint a turquoise um, a gray blue a teal a creamy color and then a, a brown I'll just leave that for a minute and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to just pour my colors in like so how easy is that hey easy peasy lemon squeezy a little bit left we'll just see how much I need I may actually need four cups for this size canvas I tend to use um, eight or nine hundred grams of mixed paint which is it's a lot but I do find I need a lot of paint so they're all having relatively the same amount in them oh this is there's a few blobs a few blobs in some of my paints when I was stirring I thought oh gosh there's a blob and I tried to get them all out but I couldn't get them all out so I think they're going to have a few little blobbies so same consistency that I would do for my flip cup pours, the mound on a mound. I'm just going to see how much room I've got before I go putting any more white in. This is the teal. When I... Um, Earlier on, like I said, I started these ribbon pours. I didn't tape the edges. But then since doing my multiple rings, uh, where you don't want the paint to go off the side, I've been taping that and I thought, oh, I'll tape the side. See how that goes today. See if it um, works the same way. All right, here we go with our two browns. This is the cream. So the colours, because I'm pouring them in on top of each other, they should blend nicely. And I've picked colours that hopefully won't make yucky colours. Hopefully they'll all blend nicely. But yeah, I want a nice blended 
sort of wavy kind of a pattern. I don't want it to be, like I said, I don't want stark lines. You know when I do my flip cut paws and I get those stripies? don't want stripies. Now I can have them pretty full, I think, because I'm not flipping them over. I'm just going to pour them. This is exciting. I haven't done this for so long. I can't even remember the last time I did one. Some stuff. It's nice to visit, revisit, I should say. Revisit some things. I'll just finish this one off in the middle here. This is my sort of turquoise that I added a bit of green to. So it's going to be more of a greenish tone, I guess. And I've got a little bit of this left. You can go in there. Might as well use everything up. And if you wanted to, you could put different amounts of colours. Like you could put more light ones in this one and then medium and then more dark ones in that one. And then, you know, you'd have lightest going to darkest. But it would actually take a long time to sort of work out what colours are going where. And I don't really have a lot of time for the video today. Let's just pour a little bit of white in there. And I've got a tiny bit of white left in case I need it, so we'll just hang on to that. Alrighty. Are we ready? Look how full they are. Let's move these out of the way. I'm going to start up here. Alright. Wish me luck. So one cup I want to sort of come, oh, there's a big blob. About a third, I guess. I may I may actually have way too much paint. I may get another paint, another painting out of this. Right, here we go. Pretty close to each other. Oh gosh, look at all that white there. Look at that. All right, I'm just going to leave that on its side for the paint to run down a bit. Now the next one, I don't like all that white, so I'm going to start here. It's because I put white in the bottom, you see. I don't mind having the white in there. I think it's a really nice contrast. I just don't want too, too much of it. It's looking pretty, looking pretty. All right, much coming out of this. Now I'm just going to use up my leftovers on the edges here. I don't want to waste any. mainly all white coming out of the bottom because you know I put white in the bottom of each cup which is fine I like the white contrast between the colors so hopefully we'll get some sort of areas that are just white whoops <laughs> there we go I think that's all of it all right okay here we go now, I don't want to tilt it too, too much to the side. So I will a little bit, but I want to basically just... I'm just going to go to the side here. See how the um, <clears throat> tape there is catching the paint? So I'll just go off to the side so we get to the sides here, like so. And then I'll come back to the middle and kind of straighten up my lines a little bit. And then this is where... I might actually, um, I was going to say I put another canvas down underneath because I think I've got way too much paint, but no, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. I'll know for next time not to use so much paint. I'm going to be carried away with my um, my colours because I thought oh, I'll have a blue and then I thought oh, I'm going to add a bit of green to it and then I added a bit more and I ended up having a lot more paint than I probably needed. Now, the thing is, now, do you want movement in it? Do you prefer just to have them straight? Let's just go straight down. I want to see, actually, I want to see if I can get rid of some of this white down here. I'm just going to, just going to do that to try and just get rid of some of that white. This white edge will run off in a minute. Just going to help that over the corner there. 
like so. I'm just going to take it down towards me. I'm going to help this little corner as well. Just like that. Whoops, knocking things over. Oh, look how pretty it's looking. Now, because I've got this kind of a wave here, I'm just going to sort of take a bit to that corner to get to that corner there. And then we'll come back a bit. Now, I think there's a bit, now I'm just looking at my composition. There's a bit too much white there. So I'm just going to take a bit of that white off there. Oops, I've got a bit there that I haven't covered yet. Now I'm going to take that side off because there's a lot of white there that can go. So let's let that go. Alrighty, that's better. Look at that, all that white's gone. Now I'm going to take this side off as well and let the paint run over that side. I just put it there to begin with, you know, to stop too much paint going off. But then um, you can just sort of take off what you want, keep what you want, going over that corner there. to the middle nearly done nearly done it's gonna straighten it up a little bit more alrighty oh look at that how pretty is that all right very nice. Got a few little stripes. <laughs> Who am I saying I didn't want stripes? Oh, I got stripes. But I haven't got too many cells, which is great. So, yay! What do you think? Do you like it? Oh, I hope you like it. That was a lot of mixing time and a lot of paint. Might have been a little bit on the thicker side, I guess. Like I said, I haven't done this for so long. <laughs> Um, I guess not to get the stripies, if I'd made it a little bit thinner, I could have moved it a little bit more and sort of ended up with this sort of a look here that I got on the sides. All right, now I'm not going to torch it because I don't want to burst any bubbles um, and bring up any cells. So I'm not going to do that. Now, let me get you down for a close up. Oh, actually, I better make sure all my sides, my little corners are covered. I'm just going to run my finger underneath like that. Catch the drips from the bottom. Make sure the corners are done. There's a little bit there that's not. Oh, that's done now. Okay, there we go. Let me get my gloves off. I'll take you down for a close up. I should turn this ring light off. It does have a like a beachy theme, doesn't it? Just with those colours. I don't love how this is pulling in there, but it's probably because I took the tape off and it all went over the side. So <laughs> probably leave that on until afterwards. I love the blending here, the shading. Let me get that tripod out of the way. Weird little brown stripe there. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why I've got some so stri so stripy. I wasn't after stripy, but you, know, you get what you get, don't you? Actually, it's really similar. I'm just looking at that one over there. It's really similar to this one, isn't it? That's my um, my multiple ring pour that I did. Oops, I wonder if I can balance it up there. Very similar colours, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't even notice. Oh, my gosh. All right, let's go back. This one's got a bit more green in it. Look at the sides. How pretty are the sides? Oh, very nice. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'll do more of these, but I'm going to try and maybe thin my paints a little bit more. Um, 
because you know when you do when you do quite thick paints your colors stay together whereas if you have thinner paints they tend to blend more so I'll try that next time but let me know what you think guys if you like it if you don't like it let me know either way and um, yeah I, I'd like to do another ribbon pour real soon so watch this space and uh, we'll do some more because they're fun you don't have to worry about overstretching your cells so you know they're relatively easy to do I guess if you're a newbie new to acrylic pouring it's probably one of the easier techniques because like I said you don't have to worry about overstretching cells and getting cells <laughs> you can just pour your paint on and get a beautiful blended painting something that you'd be happy to put up on your wall and I think this is I think it's just beautiful so thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you real soon for the next video and we'll do it again <laughs> which way would you hang it I don't know. All right. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, you guys. Love you all. Bye for now.